Jane, welcome to the Sports Editor. Thank you very much for telling us about your, your rugby career and a bit of time you spent in Europe. It's good to have you on the show. Yeah, great. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me, Ryan. It's awesome. Thank you, man. We're going to start off with your school career and you attended a West Hill Boys High School. Um, head boy. Uh, a significant achievement, that to say the least. Well done. Thank <laughs> you very you, much. Did you enjoy the, the challenges that came with actually being a head boy and also knew that you know, you've got to lead a whole group of, of boys with you in the school? Did you enjoy the challenge? Yeah, I know that the challenge was, was amazing that came with the title. It was unbelievable. Um, it was, it's, a, it's an incredible honor to have such an accolade bestowed upon me. It was unbelievable. And I, I placed great pride in doing the absolute best that I possibly could to fulfill that role to the best of my ability. Um, and it's, it's pretty much something that I've been working towards ever since my first year in high school. So to be able to achieve something that I had like a five-year goal was unbelievable. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, because it does take it's a lot of years waiting and hoping, hoping. And when you hear the announcement, yeah, there's nothing better. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and obviously, one sport that's quite prominent at Whistle is rugby. Um, how healthy is the competition in KZN? And do you think there's one sort of aspect that sets Westville apart from the uh, schools? Because, you know, KZN is obviously very competitive, to say the least. Yes. There are, there are some great schools around the, the KZN area, for sure, without a doubt. Um, there's very, very much healthy competition amongst, uh, well, I would say throughout my high school career, hmm. in terms of if we're looking specifically at rugby, I would have to, if I had to pick two schools that, um, that we most look forward to in, in the rugby season, it had to be... Glenwood and Marysburg College. I yeah. think those two schools were Wessel Boys in my in my era. I think they were our major competitors. Mm. Um, but then obviously there's so many more schools um, as well that you could include in that list as well. But I, I, like specifically those two, if we got a win on those two in in one rugby season, I think we were we walked away a very happy first team or rugby side for sure. <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, obviously throughout the years, there's always sort of like a build up to like having a, a dream team, you know, because you really want to go, yes. hopefully go unbeaten. Was there any stage in your high school career where you guys thought, you know, hey, this is, is going to be the year of, of a dream team? Um, I'd like to think I played uh, two years of first team. So I played uh, first team in 2014 and in 2015. Um, and I'd like to think that our 2014 year were almost considered as, I think, maybe a dream team. We had really high expectations for that year. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the greatest season on paper, but we had a really strong side. Um, whereas on the other hand, my 2015 side, which was my matric year, we were, uh, we were looked at as underdogs for sure, without a doubt. Throughout our whole um, season, we were complete underdogs, but then... There wasn't so much pressure placed on that side, and I think everyone looked us looked at us as underdogs. And then when they came to face us, they actually didn't realize how strong we really were. So our 2015 year actually had a, a better season in a way compared to our 2014 year. We were considered as a dream team. Sure. Um, so it's it's weird how 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 it works out in in that in that way. So it's interesting to see how, no. how it all panned out. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And then obviously. You um, wanted to take rugby a bit of a level higher. You attended the, the Sharks Academy, um, always a good sort of stepping stone, so to say. Um, was there enough time, generally speaking? And do, did your games, do you feel your game developed even more since spending time at the academy? Yeah, I know, for sure, 100%. Um, so obviously that was also one of my, my goals was to try and almost get a contract, a junior contract at the Sharks. Didn't end up getting that, but I got a full bursary to go to the Sharks Academy. Mm. And um, definitely that, that first year out of school, that 2016 year, which was my first year at the Academy, I saw a massive improvement in my game. It was unbelievable. Because in school, obviously, there was a lot of focus around the whole school environment, and I wasn't able to pinpoint and focus specifically on my rugby game, which is exactly what I did in 2016. I wanted to give it a really good crack. So... As soon as I took my focus away from my academics and I wanted to focus on my goal, which was becoming a professional rugby player, I instantly I saw an, an amazing improvement in my game. And that, that year I probably had, it was, yeah, my performance grew tenfold. Um, and it was, it was interesting to see because when you put in the effort and you, you see the, the progress going along the way and everything's unfolding and you can see it clearly at each step, it's, it's quite a special thing. And I hope... Every sportsman or aspiring professional sportsman can actually see that 
Um, Because, yeah, I'll always remember that feeling of working towards something and you seeing those like slow progressions and you're hitting those milestones along the way. It's very cool. Yeah, because it almost seems like it's a, it obviously has to be a bit of a relationship. You've obviously got your part to do, and also Wessel did their part by actually pushing you in the right direction. And yes, exactly. It, but it seems that, that Wessel, so just to go slightly back on Wessel, um, just sure. seem like you guys obviously commit to a lot to the sports program. So you're either playing cricket, or you're doing swimming, or you're doing rugby, then you're doing soccer in the third term. You guys are busy. Is that sort of like a thing that Wessel wants you to do, try and get involved in as many sports as possible? Yeah, so Westfall, they have quite a special thing going. So you, you pretty much, they say, because they want to try to keep the boys as active as possible. So they uh, say they would like you to try and play a particular sport each season of the year or each term of the year. So they, they don't want you to play like a, a cricket in the first term and then not play a sport in the second term and then yeah. they don't want any gaps. So they try and get you involved. In, in like different aspects and, and try to get you to do different things because you never know where your, your talent might be hidden. I mean, you, you might not ever get the chance to play a sport that you, you're actually really good at and you, you don't discover those skills and those talents that you actually have. So I think that's the main reason behind what the, the, the reason why West will do that. Um, but it also incorporates the – Wessel place a lot of emphasis on achieving all-round excellence as well. Uh, okay. So, okay. So we don't like to pinpoint a specific thing, but now it's, it's broader than just sports. So now when we say all-round excellence, we refer to all the spheres of our sports life. So that includes the academic side of it, the culture, the sport, and everything. So all-round excellence we try and achieve in, in like a, a broader – like a uh, spectrum instead of just focusing on one specific thing it is good to specialize but i think at that age and especially as a young man it's good mm-hmm. to like just do as much as you possibly can and you grow so much more that way for sure no that's yeah that's so good to hear i'm, I'm a firm believer in it i really believe that that's the right way to go about it so that's no, good that's really really good to hear it's good <laughs> um after the academy it was the sharks in the 21 also an, a good uh, environment to be in and did you just see, so as, you know, that as competition starts getting a bit tougher, and um, that also help you push or help you realize, hey, I'm on the route here to actually making it in the rugby world. Yeah, so um, it was actually that, that first year, that, that 2016 year, I was actually a junior in the under 21 setup. Right, right. But right. that under 21 that setup was also a really good introduction into the like, professional aspect of the rugby game. It was unbelievable because you actually don't know what goes into professional sports until you've exactly. gone through the process. Yeah. And you, you have no idea how much effort and time and blood, sweat and tears actually mm. goes into it until you're in the thick of it. So that was also a really awesome experience. And yeah, the competition gets, uh, just, it's plentiful. There's no short of competition. And especially being in a country like South Africa, there's, Rugby players coming out of yeah. uh, out of everywhere. So yeah, but also a very very good experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, and did you you play a bit of, of club rugby in Durban as well? That must have kept you busy. Yeah. So obviously to get some game time. So I didn't play every single game in that under twenty one season. So the weekends where I wasn't selected to play in the side, I would play club rugby for Collegians, which is oh, my, right. my Durban club. Yeah. So I'd be playing Prem Rugby for Collegians and then when I get selected to play on that weekend for Sharks and a 21, I'll do that. So no. yeah, the, and the club rugby setup is also very, it's very professional, very competitive, yeah. very enjoyable, so also very, very good. No, it definitely is, definitely there's a lack of out there. I hope it stays like that. Um, I hope so as well. You, what's been happening lately, all the nonsense, I hope it, it keeps going strong. But obviously, let's talk a bit about your position. Um, it's come off and I'm joking. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that? Uh, just play, you know, fullback. Always see, you always have a lack of sense of freedom to link in and play and kick and do what you want to do. Um, do you prefer, prefer playing with ball in hand, or is the kick game something you try and, and dominate and kick and chase? What is your sort of angle? For me, ball in hand, one hundred percent. I am, I'm a runner through and through. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the reason why um, I made it as far as what well, I have at this point in time in my rugby career is because of my speed and mm. because of my agility. I was a, um, a, a national sprinter back mm. in the day. So I was a, a 120 sure. meter sprinter, long jumper. So I, I try, that's one of my strengths mm. is my speed and agility. So 
100% runner of the ball, love to counter, love the one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, but then again, I have been working a lot of my kicking as well. So my kicking game is also fairly strong. Um, I kick well out of hand. Um, I can also kick uh, for poles um, oh. as well. So I, I wouldn't say that's my strong point. I think if someone looks at me as, as a rugby player, they look at me as a um, more of an attacking player rather than a, um, let's say, a, um, like a zonal player. All right. Um, put it that way, yeah. So. Very, very nice. Yeah. There's nothing better than running rugby. But again, that's just my opinion. It's, uh, it's, it's always good to see. <laughs> then you, you went overseas. You spent some time in Portugal. And I've got to try and pronounce this correctly. So you probably got a better... Uh, is Cascade? Is that right? Cascade. Cascade. Oh, totally off the mark. <laughs> Cascade. <laughs> um, <laughs> you give us a bit of a breakdown. When did you join there? What's the rugby like? Is it, is it quite, is the competition good there? Is the club trying to get into higher European competitions? So, um, so I went to, so what happened was I um, went to Portugal around October 2018 was okay. when I went there. Um, what happened was I was coming off the back of uh, two surgeries in 2017 sure. when I was still at the Sharks and then uh, battled to retain my, my spot in the, in, in the Sharks. So I was forced to well, they, they were forced to release me at the end of 2017. Um, and then the whole of the beginning of 2018 was, I like to call it a, like a rebuilding phase, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, in order for me to just get back to play, get some game time, regain that confidence. Because I'd been out for almost, I was out for like 10 to 12 months. So it was cool. a really long time. So, and then the Portuguese opportunity uh, presented itself to me um, towards the end of the year in 2018. And I think that the timing was absolutely perfect. So I grabbed it with two hands. And ran with it. So, um, yeah, the league, the league. There's also it's it's still pretty much in its development phase at the moment. Um, so, but it, without a doubt, it still has a lot of potential. And um, and the competition there is also quite strong. I mean, I had I, my expectations when I went to Portugal were like, I'll be honest, they weren't that high. And when I went there, I was pleasantly surprised to see the level of rugby and um, and the skill sets that those players actually had. Um, so that was also it was an amazing experience to see the love of the game there as well um, from a nation where you think they know nothing about the sport, which is really cool. So yeah, that was also really interesting. Yeah, it's nice because it just you, you're hearing lots of good things about rugby in Europe. Generally speaking, uh, it's growing and it's quite a bit of enthusiasm towards it. So it's it's good to see. Um, yeah. And then talk about a bit about cup competitions there. Um, it seems like, you know, we, we've got a few here in South Africa, but are there quite a few competitions taking place there? Um, obviously, they're trying to grow their brand even more. Um, yeah. so like if we had to compare the Curry Cup to a cup, perhaps in Portugal, is it something similar? Or is the rugby here still, you know, a bit more experienced, I can call it that? Yeah, so in Portugal, it's their their structure is very simple at the moment. So basically, they have their um, their Premiership division, which is their top level, just below their national team. So that's where I was playing, obviously. So I was playing in their Premiership division, and then they have one division below that, um, which is pretty much like we have a jersey. So if okay. I was if if our d domestic season, our top level, say, was the Curry Cup um, Premiership division. Um, that's where we, I was playing there. And then you have the Curry Cup first division here. Yeah. But I wouldn't, I would say our, our Curry Cup first division here is still quite a bit stronger than their, say, their premiership division. Still quite weak. But I mean, it's like I say, it's still in, in its development phase. So yeah. and it, it doesn't just happen overnight. It, yeah. it takes time to rebuild. Ah, absolutely. Yeah, I think those countries like that watch this space because they are going to get better and better and better. And especially helps them. Exactly, yeah. We've been touching on a few guys that are chatting to you. even their sevens program is getting stronger every year. So as long as they start winning those little battles along the way. <laughs> yes, exactly. And and I wouldn't be surprised to see their their um their league in Portugal as well as the national squad being a force to be reckoned with in the future mm. because I mean you can see the effort that the Portuguese rugby union are putting into the development of the league um, as well as the the rugby in the country as a whole. So they are really trying to push it as well. The um, and they have a quite an interesting brand of rugby as well. It's a, it's a lot more of a freer rugby, more expansive game. So it's very exciting rugby. It's a good brand of rugby to watch, I think. No, sure. that's very, very good. So have you picked up that Portuguese passion for sport yet? 
<laughs> of course. Um, I don't know if you I don't know if you know it, but my um my mom is actually from Portugal. Oh yeah, but they came over. No, I, I I have to admit I can't speak the language fluently, but um yeah, the the culture there is absolutely amazing. It's such a beautiful culture to be a part of. Um, mm. and this and the sports culture alone is also it's it's very special. I mean, um, and and it has to be though because they they have a, such a beautiful climate. So you. You have no excuse to go out and be active and do fun stuff and do different things. So it's a beautiful culture, beautiful climate. Um, yeah, I, there's not much to complain about, to be honest. Yeah. You played a bit of soccer, didn't you? A little bit. I did, indeed. Yes, uh, I did. Did, Actually, did, you, did you get to meet you know, like those famous stars? What's that funny chap's name? Messi. No, I'm joking. Ronaldo. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wrong country. <laughs> Uh, did you did you dabble a bit with a bit of soccer? Um, and what is it like experiencing you know that European sort of love for the game? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, no, I didn't get to meet <laughs> all those big soccer player names that come out of Portugal. But um, I can say that I went to a live uh, soccer match. Um, mm. I went to a, a Porto Sporting game no. in Lisbon, and it was amazing to experience. Mm. The atmosphere in the stadium was it's it's just so, so you can't really put it into words. Um, I've never actually watched a live football match. So the first one I ever watched was then in Portugal. So to see that atmosphere was also something truly special. No, oh, that's great. That's so good. But let's focus a bit back now in, in South Africa. And obviously, um, there's a lot of sort of decisions to be made. And no one's really what's happening with, with rugby at the moment. Um, yeah. But you're going to be playing for the Southwestern Districts um, in the Kerry Cup. Um, when did you decide to, to join the Eagles and, and give it a go there? Yeah, so um, so when I came back to Portugal, obviously I played one season there in Portugal. I came back um, in about May 2019, so this was last year. Um, so I came back to South Africa for about five weeks um, and then was lucky enough to get a really good deal. Um, within the five weeks that I was back in the SA, I got a deal at the Eagles to a short-term contract to go play in the Curry Cup First Division. So um, I took the, I definitely took that contract. I went there around, it was July, August, September. I was there for about two and a half, three months. Um, played in the Curry Cup First Division. I played in all the games, which was amazing. And I think that was, I think, a big jump um, in, in the right direction in terms of my professional rugby career because that was, for me, it was the first sort of exposure I had to senior professional rugby. Um, and to see if I could actually cope at that level or, or if I'd get left behind, you know. Um, but that was also quite evident that I was, I was capable of taking that next step and being able to, um, you know, play at that level. So it was, for me, it was nice to know that, um, but also a great experience as well. So, mm -hmm. and, and the Eagles is such an awesome union. Yeah. Um, it, the, the, the ethos, the environment there, um, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, George of all places in Cape Town. Gee, was where didn't you know, really? <laughs> really, really nice. Yeah, so that, that's good. Beautiful. Um, and uh, being sort of any mention on the Curry Cup, when is it they're looking to start it? Um, is there possibly a competition before that? Or is there any news? What, what's happening? Yeah, so everything's pretty much up in the air at the moment. Okay. Um, so the, the Eagles actually, we're playing two tournaments. We're playing the Super Bowl Rugby Challenge. And we play in the Curry Cup First Division. And the Super Sport Rugby Challenge, if it had gone through, um, obviously it got it got cancelled because of the whole coronavirus situation. But we we're actually meant to play our last game last weekend, sure, um, which is a bit of a bummer. So, and then we have a a break, and then we're meant to start uh, Curry Cup First Division in July. But um, obviously, there's no set dates at this point in time. Um, they still they still think that we we should get a full Curry Cup First Division okay. tournament in. The only difference is it's going to finish uh, finish a bit later on in the year. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally they they schedule to finish towards the end of or middle end of September. Um, it's probably going to be like end of November now if everything if we are able to return to play. So okay, we hope we we, we hope we do get a few uh, games in this year because um, yeah. it'll be pretty a, a big uh, disappointment if we have if it's a complete washout of, of a year. So no, especially, if, especially for rugby, because I mean, we've come off such a really strong year last year, winning the yeah. rugby world cup. 
yeah. and coming into this year now not having any any rugby in or much rugby um so it's been it's been a bit of a tough year for sure but definitely but i think it was in about 1999 i think that the Eagles actually got to the semi-final of the Curry Cup. So you just never know. This could be the year. You just you know. never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, but a bit of Super Rugby is happening, albeit in, in New Zealand. Um, yeah. Do you have a team that you sort of keep an eye on from a New Zealand perspective, or are you just sort of a neutral fan? You just love rugby. Who do you follow? Um, I'll be honest. Um, I, I, I do support rugby all in all, but if I had to pick a New Zealand side, I'd have to say the Hurricanes, for mm. sure. <laughs> love the Hurricanes, love the brand of rugby. Um, yeah, I, I think that if I had to pick a New Zealand side, it would be them, for sure. Definitely. But as you mentioned, let's, let's hope we get something going as well, because yeah, we need it. Um, it's, it's very important for many, many aspects. And I just yeah. think it's good for our sanity as well. But anyway, we'll, yeah. we'll hope that things work out. <laughs> That's awesome. okay, and it's, it's been really fantastic to uh, chat to you. Um, you've got an interesting career on the go there. You're a busy man, it sounds like, but you're eager for more and you want to get going and, and let's trust that things continue to get better for you and your career just keeps moving up and it's, it's good stuff. It's really good to see. Great. Thank you very much, Ryan. I really appreciate it. And thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely keep tabs and yeah, let's keep an eye on the, the rugby calendar. I'm sure we'll see you on the TV sooner than later. Let's hope so. Crossing <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Cool.